Okay. We're on the right direction. Good to go, Courtney. Thanks, so. My maintenance network can work. I'll stand. I'll stand. Okay. Uh, there's a little bit of an echo. I agree, Laura. It's coming back. It's done. Yeah, there's a little bit of an echo somewhere. Let me see. Let's move this. I don't think this is. Is this the speaker? That. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. 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 Hello? No. Yeah. I don't know. This is, this is, uh, Could it be somebody on my house? Are both rooms open? open? No. This is both. These are. In the same. Yeah, yeah. Player, it wasn't the problem. Okay. Good morning. This is the July 13, 2023 meeting of the Southern Region Board of Review. The hearing is being held via WebEx video conference at the Perry B. Duryea Junior State Office Building, 250 Veterans Memorial Highway, rooms two and three, Hopog, New York, 11788. The time is now 9:10, and this hearing is officially open. The members of the board are Erica Schaub, Andrew Hames, Palin Nee, and myself, Robert Peterson, Chairman. From the Department of State is Mr. Courtney Nation. We will now hear the scheduled petitions. When you speak, please address the board and give your name, title, and legal address so that our court reporter can have all the information requested. We may, <clears throat> excuse me, we may have to stop from time to time to consult with our technical staff. In making comments to the board, please provide a descriptive narrative on matters referring to your exhibits to enable the court reporter to enter these into the records. The first hearing is in the matter of petition number 2023-0115, the petitioner is Howard Bruce Weitzman. This petition pertains to the enclosure of an existing in-ground swimming pool that is accessory to a detached one-family dwelling. The dwelling is approximately 2,900 square feet in total gross floor area located at 516 Bay 5th Street, West Islip, Town of Islip County of Suffolk, New York State. The petitioner is seeking relief from 19 NYCRR Part 1220, the 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section R326.4.2, which requires that swimming pools shall be completely enclosed by a permanent barrier complying with Sections R326.4.2.1 through R326.4.2.6. The petitioner requests having the bulkhead of a navigable waterway substitute for a portion of the swimming pool barrier as required by Sections R326.4.2.1 through R326.4.2.6. Okay, Mr. Weitzman. Nice Hello. to meet you. Yes, you're up. Okay. Uh, Howard Bruce Weitzman, uh, homeowner at 516 Bay 5th Street, West Life City, New York. So in 1999, I had uh, put in for a variance for my in ground pool in my residence. And I had a meeting with the zoning board of appeals of the town of Islip, and they granted my uh, my variance, gave me a permit. All that documentation is in the uh, in the pamphlet that I gave you. Surveys, permits, the town seal. They did a final inspection of the fencing with the locking mechanism, self closing, fencing, and all the requirements based on a code, and gave me a, my certificate of occupancy and approval. Now. That was over 20, 23 years ago, and nothing has changed. 
and no construction has been done and everything's been properly maintained. And um, and now uh, I get a, uh, you know, I get this issue now that they say I'm in violation. So this is why I'm here because um, if they approve me then, why is it not approved now? Um, so I'm showing uh, all the pictures of the of the location so you guys can see what it is. It's hard to visualize. So I have all the uh, annotated pictures here. Um, and in the, in the document, of course, I have the permit and it specifically states that it is approved and fences the code. So if we look, uh, let's see if we find what page that is. Give me a moment. Um, so if we look on the survey this morning, it says, the stamp says, fence location approved, gates to be self-closing, self-latching, with, with a stamp and a seal and, a, and, and an autograph. So I'm in, I should be in compliance. I am in compliance. Uh, if not for nothing else, this is if, if something has changed because of some serious concern, I understand that codes are updated periodically if there are certain concerns. And in this case, I'm not aware of those concerns. I don't know if anything has been changed. So uh, on the basis of that alone, it should be grandfathered in if there was a change. Secondly, I, I want to be safe and, and do the correct thing as well. So that's why you can see in my pictures I put up, I have a three-year-old grandson that comes over on weekends. Yeah. And we put up certain gates and other additional latching and locking mechanisms. This way, he doesn't wander out of the house and you know get into the canal or the pools. So it's really to keep him in the house, not from people coming in. Is why we put those gates on. Okay. Um, I also have a copy of a petition that was sent to the state department over 20 years ago from a neighbor with the same issue, and they got uh, the determination was also granted that the. The canal is a navigable waterway is as suitable as a barrier because anyone that would approach the area would have to be able to get into this canal and swim or by a boat in the first place. And at the mean high water is above 3 feet and the pool is set back. I think about 35, maybe 40 feet from the short from the bulkhead line. And, um. That's basically the whole, the, the, all the issues here. And I had a, um, so because of the concern, I had a private professional engineer come in and just give him all the documents, say, hey, you tell me what, you know, if, if I'm in compliance, if he concurs with that. Now, when I spoke to the town uh, code enforcement, they couldn't even tell me where this fence had to go. I had a phone conversation with the, um, with the supervisor, with the inspector, Aldo Hernandez, with the uh, Strata, Jason Mistretta, his supervisor, and Jason Prudente is the head of the whole department, and none of them can tell me where this fence needs to go. I brought over a contractor, a fencing contractor, I said, where would you put a fence? Because you can't put a fence here. You're in violation of your setback rule. Put a fence anywhere else along the, there's nowhere to put a fence. This isn't. To put a fence down by the canal is ridiculous. How are you going to dock your boat and get on and off the boat? So, you know, I, I do all my due diligence to see, okay, what, what can I, how can I accommodate this requirement? So here we are. Okay. What precipitated, uh, sorry, what precipitated okay. the uh, violation? So, um, my son's going through a divorce. So his ex, you know, uh, being very vindictive, wanted to take, rights away for visitation. So she figured she'd pull and harass the code department saying his violation, you know, and, um, and, and then we would lose, uh, you know, overnight, which we did because the judge, of course, in, you know, in, in the city said, well, if there's a violation, he can be there during the day, but he can't have overnight until we get it resolved, All right? So I had to make arrangements to have him come during the day and now he can't stay overnight. So it's, it's vindictive and I'm being harassed. And 20, within, within a half an hour of the Zoom conference of the divorce hearing, the town is knocking at my door. And this happened on five occasions. So there's suspicion of collusion of a private man. And I, you, you guys, it's you don't want to It's life safety. It, they take it seriously. So they yeah. probably find out because it's... Well, I understand they have to do their due diligence. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I, I get that. I get that. But I, because I was being, I felt I was being harassed. And the timeliness of it is why I hired uh, uh, Mr. Rivera here, who's the deputy inspector for TNM, 
to, to walk the inspector through my property and to survey and, and gather all this evidence to protect my rights and my interests. You know, that's okay. why she's. All right, so let's get granular okay. a little bit with the plans yeah. and stuff. Go ahead, Andy. The, the, let me point out a couple of things. Yeah. Uh, number one, there, but first of all, let me ask a question. The uh, department, the inspector that came, was that from the building department or code enforcement or code the. That was from code enforcement, correct. not from the building department. That's correct. Uh, I'm surprised that, uh, well, uh, and when it was first approved, well, the approval you got was a zoning approval. Right. I had to go through in front of the building department and get a permit, right, and get their approval for the okay. variance. And all my neighbors had to be involved in that process, of course. Uh, all I can say is apparently they were in error. Uh, and uh, this has happened before. It actually happened to me uh, where I got a summons for a full enclosure. Uh, and that was incorrect because they were enforcing, uh, in my case, they were enforcing a, a, a code that was more restrictive than the state code. Uh, the town building code is not the applicable code. The state building code is the applicable code. And the town has a duty to enforce that. Uh, if they don't, then that's a problem. Uh, but that that is the code that has to be enforced. Uh, so if they gave you a permit, they may have been incorrect in doing that. Well, did it, you uh, said nothing changed. I mean, the approval says self closing, yeah. self latching gates. I have additional pictures of those. Okay. That you don't yeah. Them. That's not well, these child proof accordion things that you yeah, have on the deck. There is, um, okay. I didn't include that in here because it's already. Yeah. So here's, a, here's a picture of one of the closing locking gates. Okay. Which the, side of the property is that? That would be the, the uh, east side. Okay. East side. Uh, to the back. Yeah. That's opposite the canal, right? Correct. The record opposite yeah. the canal. That's correct. And then you have uh, the same fence down the fence the south side. Yeah. So also I have the deadbolt latching locks on the on the sliding door from the house to the deck, which leads to the backyard. Is that so, alarmed? That would need to be alarmed. No, it's not physically alarmed. It's the uh, well. See, according to Islip Code and State Code, that has to be alarmed. I have or a self closing, uh, self latching. It's, that's the state code. Yeah, right. it's uh, it's not as well. It's self latching, and it's like this can't really. No, that's not the house. That's not on the house. Yeah. That's part of his dwelling. But, his if, the, doors. but if the but if the house at a time is yeah. part, if the house is part of the enclosure around the fence, then that has to be self closing and locking. A sliding glass door needs to be self closing or alarmed. Or yes. alarmed. Okay, well, yeah. it doesn't have an alarm. Uh, so that's okay. another issue. Okay. Uh, our concern and is on <laughs> obviously on the uh, west side. Okay. And the fence enclosure has to prevent anybody from getting into the area where the pool is. Uh, and because the fences do not does not go down. Even if we allowed or gave a variance for the bulkhead acting as an enclosure, you still have the walkway along the bulkhead. Can I interrupt you for a second? That is open. So he's got this little finger that returns as part of his property? Yes. That goes to the west? And I, I just putting a visual on it. I don't know if that fence meets or complies with the code, but it goes over the walkway to the piling. At that part, correct. The okay. pilings on each side of yeah, the you see that are totally enclosed by a fence. Okay, so there's a 90 degree turn. The fence again. One at a time. Yeah. One 90 degree turn, and then the fence returns to the piling. A code official would have to go out and determine if that, because the latching mechanism has to be 54 inches above the ground. The gate has to swing out away from the pool. There's all these requirements in the building code to designate that as a code compliant barrier. The spacing between the balusters. The 45 inches for the ladder effect on the horizontal, all that stuff. It's very specific. Sure. So someone has to look at that to determine that 
and would meet the code, then that would that would be a barrier that would not be able to access your property from that side. Well, yes and no. Can I add something to that? Um, just as Mr. Hames finishes thought. Yeah. Uh, somebody could swing around that post if that post is it's right at the point. bulkhead. And that's we've had some cases and in the past where they extended beyond the bulkhead yes. 18 to 30 inches. As a matter of fact, the 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 case that you included in the packet has a return. Has a return on that's it. That's correct. And it required either you go out over the canal for a certain distance, I think it was 30 inches, or you have a return of 30 inches. My adjacent neighbor has that return, in fact, for the on his side. On on, on the uh, on the north end. On the north mm -hmm. end, okay. Yeah. So where that little finger was that you were looking at? I didn't see if that. If you look at the picture, you'll see that they that my neighbor had put in on his end. If you look at this picture here, with that piling, you will see that there's a little black gate um, object that it's on, on his end that's about the 18 and 24 inches or something in that. I'm what sorry, but I don't. I, I'm very hard to yeah. say again. I'm not. What seeing. page are we on? I, yeah. I can't We're see anything. The, um, yeah, the last page. Hold on a second. We're on. Um, yeah, the, the very last page. Well, actually, she doesn't have that. doesn't have the packet. So, um, exhibit H dash one one. Yeah. H. Okay. All right. Thanks. Like one and one three. Oh yeah, one one uh, one one. That it's hard to see in one one. Look at H one three. And you'll see yeah, that yeah. is a um, to the left of the piling. There's a uh, about an 18 or so inch uh, metal gate that was added. So on. that's recently installed because it's yeah. not on the other photo. Okay. Yes, because the town when the town he just had his pool done this year. So when the town came, they asked him to put those returns. In. So when they I looked at the returns, did they deem that fence compliant yeah. with the barrier? That's correct. It's that is over here. Okay. Pardon? It's town request. So it's over here. Oh, right. I didn't. I, I didn't measure it, but it, it's at place. least. It's You're gonna have to talk one at a time, otherwise. I know it's not a hard time. I'm sorry, it's a return. So the the return, if you include the piling, is probably close to the thirty inch. Close to thirty inch. Yeah. Okay. The gate itself is not, but if you add the piling onto that, it's probably close to thirty. Inch. Now, what if they improved that area? What about on the south side? Uh, on my south side, that's my uh, neighbor to the, the south. Let's see. By the way, the fact that your neighbors don't have enclosures does not relieve you from having it because you were cited. They should be cited too. Well, that means, uh, yeah, so if you look on H6, where's the number? H H H six. Okay. You can see the my my adjacent neighbor with a little floating platform is there. There's no. I mean, there's a big bush there and a piling, but there's no gate return on that end. Uh, that means, sir, that there's probably over a hundred homes in my community alone with schools that are not compliant. That the may ones, be. Yeah. That you know, could ones be. that so are they going to come around and enforce all, all those other homes too? I wonder. I'm yeah. an architect. I just did a job on Wagstad. We, it's right in West, West Islip. Yes, yes. Yeah, we did a fence on the landward side of the boardwalk, like the dock. So yes. it was in about six feet, and then we have a pool barrier that runs there. So you go through the gate, you access your boat, you come back, and you go through the barrier again, and you have the pool area. So it's separated. It's a clear barrier. And the code. Well, yeah, and I think honestly, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think it's achievable. It's just spending money. But I think with your house, well, you have this kind of planter, small little low planter. Yeah. So you put a fence right on top of that, put a gate at the ramp, and get a, a good solid barrier between. So you know that the ramp is for putting water craft down. Yeah, to the yeah. So it has to be uh, openable. It has to be able to open. All I'm saying is, I think there's a design solution there to get a good solid barrier. If you're looking to try and terminate at the bulkhead. Then we could look at past sided cases for that and extensions beyond the bulkhead. And then the rest of the barrier needs to be examined for coal compliance. So they did come on to the property and Mr. Rivera escorted him. I'll just let him speak on what 
what he said when he came down. Maybe he's in, 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 in mistaken. By the way, yes, he was mistaken. Oh, okay. he, it was an error. He, he was wrong. He should not have said uh, certified that as being co-compliant. So, he was absolutely wrong. Do you want to anything specific that was non-compliant? Yeah, just well, well, that's why we're here. Okay, I'm just. <laughs> We lost a visual for the in person petitioner. Yes. Let's see. Uh, I'll repeat the format. What recurrence to the dwelling here? No, still Right. And then it goes, I think there's a fence that goes something like this. Yeah. The, the that return over there, which is, which is, that's acceptable for okay. me. So this would be an extension. And this would be I, an I, extension. But he's got. Kind of, if he makes an extension, here. Okay, too. Do we want to do that in deliberation? Yeah. So, Courtney figures out our technical. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's long off, right? it's just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I think you're waiting. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, there you are. Oh, yes. Yeah. As, 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 as the, the um, um, well, oh, no, that way too. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you can move. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, already there. Oh, it's already there. Yeah. So back, we're back. Uh, yes. Yes, we've got video. All right. So just a couple of questions. I made notes. You reside at the home? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else reside with you or there's no there's no accessory apartment or anything like no, that? No, 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 no. That's my family. Okay. No, so everybody has familiarity with the okay. property? Okay. Courtney, I have a quote. I have, I have a question. Sure, Erica. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. Um the canal, it's not um it's, it, I mean, it, there's no access, it, it's public access, so I can go up and down the canal if I am on a boat, right? Like, yes, anybody yes. can go up and down the canal. Okay. The well, question was, um, isn't in the property maintenance code, pool barriers are retroactive? It's probably the only part of the code that, that's my understanding. Yeah. Yes. 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 But it's not, it's not exactly like R-326, um, or is it? I think prefer it the 326. It, it it says you have to conform the 326. Okay. Retroactive. I think effective sometime in the past. So so if Mr. Weissman got a CO and had it inspected 23 years ago, you said 1999. 1999. And now we have this code in place today. Somebody conducts an inspection with a issues of violation. He's required to upgrade that barrier to meet today's code. Um, the, the, the retroactivity goes back to a certain date. In other words, prior to that date, he didn't. He doesn't have to do that. In other words, the, the way it's written in the property maintenance code, and I don't, you know. Okay. Have oh, I like day. learning new things. Yeah. I, I will. I didn't know this either. I'll fetch the books because. That used to be my book, but I had to. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. I just know there was yeah, something no, with regards yeah, to retroactivity. Oh, uh, yes. The, the retroactivity in the property maintenance code goes back to a certain date okay. beyond which it, um, it, you know, the code in effect at the time okay. picks up. So his pool predates 2006, right. which was the submersible alarm requirement, correct? Right. So he doesn't need to do that. Oh, I have an alarm. Uh, oh. goes in, he goes into the pool. Yeah, think. that is, I think that was retroactive. I don't. There's a 2006, December 2006 trigger. Right. If the pool existed before then, they don't need to have I, the submersible alarm. I'm not sure about that. I, I, I'll, I'll double check that. I think it does. Um, okay, I thought I vetted that out before. And then I, I do have a uh, summer form. Okay, so even though it's that's supplemental, that I guess I'm trying to be, you know, yeah. around the side for it. Well, that's good for the whole package, the whole presentation. And if you had a power safety cover, then you alleviate the need for 
the alarms on the door and stuff like that. But I see that it's a kidney shaped pool and that would be tough, but it's tough. <laughs> It's tough getting it in there. So the town I said would need to examine the whole barrier and using a dwelling as part of the barrier. Right. So any doors in that part of the dwelling would need to be examined for self-closing, self-latching, or uh, co-compliant pool alarms. And you lock it. Uh, now, and, um, and then the bulkhead. Let's go back to the, the south fence. Uh, the south fence still is open to the neighbor. Uh, Correct. There's a uh, there's a step down, a cut down end to go into the canal. If you look at the picture, I don't know if that qualifies as a barrier. So if you look on either on the on the survey drawing, you can see it's sketched in there. But if you look on H six, you can see that there's a floating platform in front of that step down, which is directly adjacent to that south neighbor. That step down is about Two, two and a half feet. Eight, so yeah, it's about two feet. It's a floating platform in front of it, and then you have the piling and then some bushes. But that walkway right at the bulkhead goes right past the uh, the fence and uh, uh, no, there's a there's a, there's a gate. I mean, there's a fence behind that bush that separates my neighbor from myself. Does that go down right to the water? Yes, it does, and it's locked. Yeah. If you look on the survey drawing, you'll see survey the fence goes just drawing. Yeah. Is the fence goes all the way down to the end. Do you have a better photo? Uh, let's see. You might be able to see it better in that thing. Is that an exhibit? Uh, no, this is in a this is a different document that I had uh, just brought in case we needed it. But Exhibit H six is the closest you can you can see that. numbers. So there appears to be a solid fence that terminates at the top of the piling. That's correct. It runs all the way down the whole south. And how big is a piling? Twelve inches in diameter. Oh yeah, at least that. So would you be amenable to another extension like on the other side? Of course. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's, that's, that's a simple matter. Okay. Right over here. That's his. Yeah. Chairman, do you want to make that photo into the record? Um, it doesn't have, have an exhibit, so we can make it. You have a copy of that? Take it right out of here. Okay, we can take that in as exhibit yeah. H14. Thank you. Picture also be helpful. And you can see the fence behind the board. This is solid. The winter time, so it's not so much greener in line. But so there's no, I'm sorry to interrupt you. There's no gate there, right? It's locked. Oh, it's a locked it's gate? So is the gate on the uh, on the north side. That's that's the paddle gate. Okay. Can you just kind of direct me on where the doors are in the dwelling? Sure. If you, um, so let's see. Look. Oh, if you look at this Google Earth map view, okay. it could be which exhibit is that? A uh, four H four. So you can see that these there's a, there's a row of uh, um, skylight. Yes. And right below that, you can see the sliding glass door. That's the way to get out to the backyard. Okay. Is there any other doors in the back of the dwelling or on the that's south it. side of the dwelling? No. 
The only way in and out of it is along the front. So on the extreme, what is that? The east side, it looks like there's two doors. Yeah. So that's a shed. Those are uh, one's a pool equipment shed and one's an outdoor shower on soldier. So Storage rooms room. only. Okay. Correct. Just a utility. Uh, so you have the one slider that communicates inside the dwelling. That's correct. Out to the deck. That's okay. correct. So these childproof gates that you put up are just supplemental barriers, just that's for your correct. grandson. So that, right, because that, that leads on to the deck. And this way, if he should get out the back, you can't get out of the deck area. That was just a requirement from the uh, the judge. The okay. Safety. Okay, but just looking at the photos, it doesn't appear to me that the railings around the deck and these supplemental gates comply with the pool code. So you would still need to have that door alarmed. Oh, okay. The rear, the sliding glass. The sliding glass. Yeah, that's that's not I mean, a problem. Because if you did have a barrier around the deck compliant, you wouldn't need to do that because the barrier would protect well, communication through that. Well, this, well, there is a fence entirely around the entire deck, a code fence. So, but, but the, these gates don't comply with the code. They would need to be self-closing, self-latching. Oh, I see what you're yeah. saying. Okay. And then, so that, yeah. yeah, those are put in, a, right. Those are removable, but they're not self-closing, self-latching. Yeah. Right. You can't have anything removable. Okay. And you can put those mesh things in that help. Yeah. But they don't really, right, Courtney, you don't yeah. really comply. Yeah. Okay. So I thought that counted. So that so my, was, yeah. So my point is you, you would need to alarm that, that slider. Well, that, well that's, you that, that's probably renovated easier. your railings and gates. It's stuff. probably easier to put the alarm on the door. It's not, you know, okay. That's, that's a simple fix. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Anybody else have any other questions? No, no. Carica? You have any I'm other good. questions? No. Okay. Did I notice in one of the pictures, uh, this is for a door um, for the, is it the west side of the, the dwelling in the shed portion, below the shed portion of the The canal is on which side? The canal is on the west. On the west, on the west, side. On the east side then. The, 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 toward the east. Oh, those are the those are the doors. utility sheds. I think you're referring to those doors, sir. These two white doors here. Yes. Those yeah, that was yes. Yeah, that was the uh, pool equipment and the shower. And there's no intercommunication between that and the uh, residence and the rest. No, those are only ac accessible from. Well, I think I kind of know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, <laughs> windows aren't part of the. In today's code, the windows with the four inch. Opening, yes, that doesn't apply here. Um, I I don't believe it would apply if this pool was put in prior to that retroactive cutoff date. Okay, but I'll I'll in the deliberation. Okay. okay. What is it? Hey guys, it's Erica. What is the hardship? And what is it in light of alternatives? Is that the uh... yeah. Remember on the application, what you checked off as your hardship. Uh, My internet is down. I'm sorry. I can't. No, no, no. It's, it's no problem. Uh, well, here it is. Oh, you got it? I have it. Would be un unnecessary in light of alternatives. Okay. Yeah. Which without a loss of level of safety, achieve the intended objective of the code. Okay. Yes, that's the question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, battery died. So let me. Battery, uh, once you sleep, that's what's what's <laughs> don't you have a plug in? It's time for a new battery. Is this a good time we could deliberate? Can we be heard? No, I'm good. Yeah, so we right. can, can uh, we're gonna talk this out. Oh, okay, we'll pull you yes. back in and we'll render a decision. Chris, you want me to listen? Okay, yeah, no, no. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we got a lot of reading. Erica, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay, great. Back on the record. Okay, with respect to petition number 2023-0115, the petitioner is seeking relief from 
I'm sorry, aggrieved party, Howard Bruce Weitzman. The petitioner is seeking relief from 19 NYCRR Part 1220, the 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section R326.4.2. The board makes the following findings. Number one, an in-ground pool is located in the rear yard of the subject dwelling. Number two, according to the applicant's survey and pictures, there appears to be a code compliant swimming pool barrier, parentheses fence, located to the south of the pool along the south property line. There also appears to be a code compliant fence to the east of the pool between the south property line fence and the south wall of the dwelling. Number three, the south wall of the dwelling may be able to serve as a barrier to the north of the pool if compliant with R326.4.2.8 of the 2020 Residential Code of New York State. Number four, the west side of the pool does not have a code compliant barrier. Number five, the west side of the pool fronts onto the Suckatog Canal, and there is a wood walkway that intervenes between the pool and the canal that extends beyond the limits of the applicant's property. At the north end of the canal, the petitioner's fence extends to the bulkhead, and there is an additional approximately 18 inch fence extension beyond the bulkhead, which was recently installed by the neighboring property. Number six, there's a floating dock on the south side of the boardwalk where the bulkhead drops down for access. The board considers that a barrier is required to restrict access to the pool in this area. Number seven, the petitioner has provided an exhibit of a past code state variance determination allowing a bulkhead to substitute for part of a swimming pool barrier. Number eight, the petitioner has stated that the pool presently has a code compliant swimming pool alarm installed. So with respect to 19 NYCRR part 1220, section R326.4.2, the board finds strict compliance with the provisions to the Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code would entail practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship and would be unnecessary in light of alternatives which ensure the achievement of the code's intended objective or in light of the alternatives which without a loss in level of safety achieve the code's intended objective more efficiently, effectively, or economically. And the granting of this variance will not substantially adversely affect uniform code provisions for health, safety, and security. Wherefore, it is determined that the application for a variance from the provisions of 19 NYCRR Part 1220, Section R326.4.2, B, and is hereby proposed to be granted with the following conditions. Condition number one that a code compliant swimming pool barrier shall be located to the south of the pool along the south property line. Number two, that a code compliant fence shall be located to the east of the pool between the south property line fence and the south wall of the dwelling. Number three, that the south wall of the dwelling shall serve as a barrier to the north of the pool and shall be compliant with section R326.4.2.8 of the 2020 Residential Code of New York State. Number four, that the fence at the north end of the canal and the fence extending to the canal at the south side shall either extend out from the bulkhead over the canal by a minimum of 30 inches or shall have a return along the edge of the bulkhead of the same 30 inches. Number five, that the area where the bulkhead drops down for access to the floating dock shall be enclosed by a cool compliant swimming pool barrier with an approved self-closing self-latching gate, which may swing either inward or outward. Number six, that a swimming pool alarm conforming with ASTM F2208 shall be installed, used, and maintained as per the 2020 Residential Code of New York State. And number seven, that all other provisions applicable to swimming pools in the uniform code shall be met. I need a motion to approve with these conditions. So moved. May I get a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Erica, aye remotely. Okay, motion is approved. Furthermore, it should be noted that the decision of this board is limited to the specific building and application before it as contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specification presented in support of this application. Okay, so there you go. I did that, right? I can't write that fast. <laughs> And I don't know shorthand. So yeah, the the, the so, first few conditions were basically establishing that you have the fence barrier already established. Correct. And you're just going to make sure and confirm that it complies with the code. Okay. And then we had additional measures down by the drop bulkhead and the fence extensions. Well, the fence extensions we have on one side, correct? 
Yeah, we're, we're, we're asking happens. for 30 inches. We're asking for 30 inches, not so the. So I put eight. my 18 and his 18. That's the 30. Inches. The 30 inches would be up to the code official on, you know. Yeah. Whether that barrier is, is suitable. Okay. And the step down, you said you need it has to be a requirement. When the bulkhead well. drops in yeah. that area, we want to corral that area. Oh, you want to corral the area? Yes, and close it with the pool barrier. Oh. Okay. Yes. That's it. it Either that or. You know, we thought in discussion that, you know, if you just put a simple pool fence between the house to the south fence, you'd be done. Yeah, well, that's uh, so you still have that option. Just want you to know to that. Put it where? To put a code compliant barrier from the house to the south fence. Oh, sure. Take the door out of the equation. Yeah. Slide yeah. the door out of the equation. I have a nice fence with a gate, separates the, the walkway and the bulkhead from I'd have to be at least four foot off the edge of the pool and that would put me right where that ramp is. That's the I think, thing. That I think we were talking about foot off the pool. Uh, uh, no. Has to be at least a minimum of four feet. No? And I, that I think is in the town of Islip code. I don't think that's in the state code. Oh okay. And once again it is in the time I've, I've had the problem yeah. with the town of Islip being more restrictive than the state. That's illegal. They cannot do that. Unless they get it approved by the code council. Unless they get it approved, yeah. but yeah, which they have. So you're saying from the house across that south side fence there would satisfy everything. You wouldn't need a variance. Sort of alluding to that yeah. in the hearing about putting a fence up, but there was a design solution there. Yes, exactly. So um, I'm trying to figure out how to even. So you have a approval with conditions or. Put a fence up and you okay. Can I have that in writing? You, you will, you'll get it. Yeah, okay. Get it what? Is this one I can just read through? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Do you think? Yeah, it takes a while. <laughs> it, it, was it coming by course? <laughs> if you wanted to do the option uh, of putting the fence up, yeah. the town is giving you problems, then it's solved. Yeah, well, they're, 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 you know, there's trouble, look up trouble in the dictionary and there's. Kind of ice kind of ice, ice. Yeah. There. I, I wound up. Are we off the record I, or on the record? They, oh, I, I have an, I had an above ground pool. Yeah. And the town cited me because my fence around the yard didn't have a compliant gate, a locking gate. And I went back to them and I said, you can't enforce that because the sides of my above ground pool are an effective pool enclosure so under state the code. Grade, yeah. And I, I wound up getting them to change their code because they were trying to enforce something that was more restrictive than the state. So um, they cannot enforce anything more restrictive than the state. But unless they have. Unless they've gone through the state state approval, approval. Right. Yeah. Of course. Which they so, haven't done. Just so I'm just clear on uh, the, the two returns and the corralling of the step down the, the, or the fence around. From the house on the south side. Yeah. Those are the options. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Corral and step down is not a problem. You know, I have full alarms. It's in the document there. Yes. Yeah. Do I still need the alarm on a sliding glass door? Yes, that's part of the You're using the, the house system. as. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's not a problem. That's easy to also. Yeah, right. I'll be looking for that. And they'll inspect the south fence and the, uh, just the east fence to make sure. And it looks like in the photos. But the gates to make sure all that meets today's oh. code. Yeah. And then you'll have the continuity. No, it's kind of like <laughs> those criminals. No, we're done with us. <laughs> Sorry, I have to say that, but those. I wouldn't be so general with that statement because there's always yeah. nice people that work at townships. There are the people like all of us are just people, but. You know, I don't yeah. don't paint with a broad brush like okay. that. No, I, Could I, be a few I, bad eggs. My apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to spoil the whole fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pull this over a can of tuna, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what you want to do is go to the building department, not to code, uh, code enforcement. You know, you get the run around on the floor over there, right? Uh, I haven't dealt with them that's in years, why, but. Yeah. That's why I'm here, because I call the building phone. I call the zoning board of appeal. I went yeah, personally to see the, 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 um, the chief over there. I can't get answers. They couldn't even tell me what they even wanted this time. Like, well, how do you cite something and tell me I'm the violation? You can't give me a resolution. Right. So tell me what, what you want. Yeah, they're responsible oh, for enforcing the code. So somebody there should build the code. 
Yeah. yeah. So that was frustrating for us. So you call them, yeah, that's why I'm here because I can't get anywhere with those guys. Well, and they just go like this. You know. They if they don't have the answers again, then call Courtney and. Okay. So you guys will. They don't understand the code. Fire feet to the fire, huh? Okay. Um, all right. So corral the returns on our problem. I might just corral that because I don't want to impede the flow in my yard for getting down to the ramp or watercraft and things, which that would be. A hardship, but the corral to step down, that's in the returns, that's that's a piece of cake. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Enjoy your summer. You too. All right. The next one is remote. What, what what's the uh yeah, for the applicant petition is Chris Gray, R A. Gray. Yeah. Mr. Gray, you're there today. I know his uh, his APA. Yes, I am. Good morning. Oh, you? Do you have any appeals to anyone for the hearing? Uh, no, the uh, owner, okay. I believe he's uh, he's uh, out of the um, he's on vacation or something, so he's unavailable for today. Okay, so, so we'll read our yes into the record and then we'll uh, have, you have you present. Okay, sure. All right, thank All right. you. Thank thank you. you. Him and him. Echo again. Yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris has got to get got to get her. Two speakers on. Him. You might have, you might two have devices. devices. No, I have, I have, um, I have an iPad. I'm, I'm looking at, and my, my uh, radio is off. I'm si totally silent here. Yeah, yeah. I think if your mic, your mic is close, close to the speaker, speaker, that could be that causing, could be causing uh, feedback. Feedback. I have, I've had, had, had that same that problem. Same problem. It. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's an iPad, so I can't, I can't uh, adjust. Well, what we're going to have to do is have you have your mic off until you, so you want to speak, speak. And then when you're not speaking, you shut it off. Shut it off. We got crazy. We got crazy. Coming back. Coming back. All right. I'll turn my, I'll turn it off. All right. Thank you. Once again, I can't access this thing online. All right. That's because usually you're using my hotspot. I use yours. I got mine. And for some reason, let's rock and roll. I create one. <laughs> I got my mobile hotspot. It's on. And I was getting emails, but I can't access the uh, the whole application packet digitally. So are we on the record, Courtney? Uh, when when you say recording, it's in progress. Then okay, I did not hear that yet. I hadn't turned it off. So we're on. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> so you, Can you edit it? You let it on through all that extraneous talk we had. <laughs> the court reporter doesn't have to record it. <laughs> okay. Okay. The second hearing is in the matter of petition number 2023-0070. The petitioner is Chris Gray RA for Calvin Gnu. Okay, this petition pertains to a variance for an existing dwell, existing teat thatch dwelling, construction type 5B, two stories in height, approximately 2,230 square feet in gross floor area, located at 332 Corcoran Place, Incorporated Village of Valley Stream, County of Nassau, State of New York. Petitioner is seeking relief from 18 NYCRR Part 1220, the 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section AJ601.3, Exception 1, which states, Space created in basements may have a ceiling that projects to within six feet, eight inches of the finished floor and beams, girders and ducts in such space or other obstructions may project to within six feet, four inches of the finished floor. Existing finished ceiling heights and spaces in basements shall not be reduced. The petitioner is seeking a variance to allow ceiling heights in a basement that are less than allowed. Okay, Mr. Chris, you're up. Good morning. I uh, just wanted to clarify that this uh, dwelling is attached dwelling. Um, also, the um, it's a two-story structure over a basement, and also in the the front entry off the street, uh, you enter onto the first floor, and at the rear of the dwelling, there's a walkout basement. So I wanted to clarify that. Thank so you. the owner had finished this basement, um, and the main issue is, oh, I should say, the ceiling height is in compliance. It is. Six feet ten, where six foot eight is minimum. The big issue is the uh, obstruction with a, a beam um, that that um, 
the ceiling height under the beam is five foot nine, where six foot four is required. Uh, this beam, uh, although it's shown in the section that the beam is taking this this box, uh, there's there's a, a there has to be a, a steam pipe or something in there. The uh, the existing boiler is a uh, is a steam boiler, so that's usually problematic with those systems. Did you do, did you do any explanation? Excuse me. Did you do did any explanation? Did you determine what's behind that? No, I did. I didn't. I didn't want to destroy the guy's his his uh his um soffit there. But that, in my experience, and seeing these quite often, um, there's you know it's those steam pipes that that usually are the problem. The the projection is. Um, 11, it's 11 inches down from the ceiling, which is, that is huge. And that, that would, that would mean there's, there's a beam of a, a lesser height. And then, like I said, there's, there has to be a steam pipe in there. Why, Why wouldn't it be assumed to be two by 12? It's, it's a pretty big uh, yeah. I don't think this is going to work. Where's the way it is right now? I would, I would think it, it could be, you know, it, that's, a, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, beam you know i you know i suspect there might be a steel beam in there so what's the span the span uh is um, 18 foot three inches yeah okay, yeah. okay. With, no with no columns with no columns correct yeah that, that is, is quite, that's, quite a, that's a heck of a span yes and then what's, and then what's the what joint 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 uh they're they're probably two by eights are you are sure, sure? Yes. No, that's a, a that's a, an educated guess. Let me see. There might have been a spot. I'm looking in my uh, in my notes. The uh, the boiler room. It, it, everything was all covered. There's no way to see that. The, the, it's it's totally totally enclosed. But typically, that's the span is is uh, for the floor joists is very short. Okay. okay. So, so has your client finished, finished the basement? The basement? Uh, I yes. Okay. okay. We're going to have to do something about this. Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that last comment. The, um, um, the court, reporter court reporter is not going, not going to be able, able to hear, hear about, about the, the echo. echo. Um, um, so, so Chris, Chris, Mr. Gray, Mr. Gray you're, you're going, going to have, have to mute, mute, mute or I can or mute I can you mute as soon as, as um, the chairperson starts to speak. Okay, so how do you control? You'll control me or something like that, or a telephone, and do audio only. We Try to again to speak, um, Rob. Let me see is if the echo is still there. Lola, is there a way to work around this echo? Maybe he just calls in with audio only without the, the computer. That was my thought. That if he mutes himself and just calls in, it might be um, easier. Does he have two people there that are? No, he said it's just his iPad. Because there were times when he wasn't echoing. No, only when he's his, his muted, he doesn't echo. Whenever he's muted, he doesn't echo. Or nobody echoes. But as soon as he unmutes to speak, there's an echo. There's an echo. When anybody else is speaking. So, can you call in audio through a phone, Chris? Chris? Certainly. May I have the number? See, he's not echoing right now. Well, I will. Um, he's echoing. Right 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 I will um, send you the telephone number. number. Give me a second, me a second to, email to email you. you. Okay. So, so you got to mute yourself down to the right. Mute myself? Okay. Yeah. So you're going to call with the phone and then keep that muted because there's no echo once you have that muted. Okay. Um, oh, while we wait Mr. Bay, calling. I can give you the number now. If you're, are you ready? Go ahead. That's 518 549 0500. And is, is there a uh, code number he has to enter? To uh, not it? with that number. Not with that number?
I need a uh, meeting number. Okay. okay. Um, one, one six, six one, one four, one four, five three. Two nine. Two nine. Thank you. Options here. Oh. Uh, and then color and Well, we don't know. That that's also a long distance. All right, let's go. So the last question we had I think was regarding when the work was completed. Uh, and that, who who's it completed by? Uh, it was. The date is unknown, but the uh, but the owner had built it himself. The present owner, your client? Yes. Okay. Does he happen to know what's behind the soffit? Um, I I believe we discussed it. I believe there's a pipe there. He told me. Is it underneath the beam or alongside Un the beam? Underneath. That would explain the, the, the depth, the unusual depth for that. All right, so I'm going to ask the question. How do we get this thing up to 6 feet? Um, well, can you, up, can you upset it in the floor? I don't know what kind of beam it is, but. Well, typically a, a steam pipe, uh, it has to have a certain pitch to it. Uh, perhaps, the, the beam. Yeah. perhaps the uh, soffit could be opened up. And see what possibly could be done. I mean, that's a better solution than getting denied. Because five nine is a difficult thing. I mean, I'm only speaking for myself, not the other board members. But um, without knowing what's behind the soffit, it's hard to really come up with a solution of how much space you can gain. Does the pipe kiss the bottom of the drywall? Is it up an inch or two? You know, I'm, every sure, I'm sure it's close to a beam at one point, and then and then as the pitch goes down, it gets it gets drastic at the opposite end. Yeah, the soffit holds the lowest points. I get Correct. it. Correct. Um, so the photos show up obviously habitable space, like a living space, rec room. Yes. yes. The application says finished storage. It's it's an interchangeable term with the uh, with building departments, but it's it is a rec it's like a recreation space. Well, it's treated differently in the code, so that's why I'm asking. But it's you want to use it as the same as you demonstrate in the photos. I would, yes. Okay. Do you guys have any other questions? Do you want to? Uh, we have some lights that are flush with the ceiling. Um, we have some bifold doors on the boiler room. Uh, Chris, are the walls rated around the boiler room? Uh, yes. It's Interesting thing. There's ahead. no reference about boiler rooms in the code. No, but often when we grant a variance for a low headroom in a basement, we require that the boiler room uh, be have a one hour fire rating uh, and fire rated doors. That's fine. It's upgrading the life and uh, fire safety, Chris. That's we ask for these enhanced features, even though it's not in the code. That's fine. That's fine. This thing. Can see my face? Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I do we have any numbers of cost to to possibly remedy this situation? Like to no, not at not at this moment. So where where do you stay now? Is this a violation with the billing department or um 
Well, I believe they had a, there was a fire, and then that brought in the fire department and the building department, and it was discovered that this basement did not have a permit. Okay. The fire in this house? I think it was it was a relatively minor it was a minor fire nothing nothing uh, substantial but um, the firemen were were called in and the building department were called in. Uh, I don't know that that, that exact detail. Maybe his fire alarm went off or something. I guess. One option here might be to adjourn pending further investigation yes. of that beam and uh, potential uh, potential mitigation. Yeah, identifying what's behind it. I mean, it's pretty wide. You know, be nice to know what's behind it to see what you guys can do. So, is it is the is the duct chase or the the duct soffit? To serve upstairs only, or is it serve the basement? Oh, well? it's unknown. It's everything's all concealed. Usually, um, with a steam system, you have a loop that goes around the whole you know, for the for the whole house. The drawings in the photo show a ductless mini split, which is a heat pump for heating and cooling. So, I mean, I'm just making assumptions here, just to talk, but maybe I, I the would basements. Say I would say that uh, that steam pipe is to serve the first and second floor. That, that, there probably was never any heat in the basement. Okay. But there's no duct in there. We're not sure. That's why we're sort of guessing. Uh, that that is a um, a ductless unit. Let no, me... I'm talking about in the soffit itself. There's no penetrations like for vents. Oh no, or no, no it's, There's no hot air. It's it's steam steam uh, okay. heat. Okay. Steam heat has a gas fired steam boiler. So the distribution is hydronic. Is that correct? Hydronic yeah. baseboard? Okay. And then the AC, there's no air handler down in the basement that would distribute air for duct for duct work? No, that uh what you see in the wall is a ductless unit. Okay. So would you be okay uh, coming back with some more information? Um, that's one possibility. Um, also, the, on a previous case, you you have made a decision where the ceiling height must be this, and then we have to work with it. If if you if the if you were to grant that a, a six foot height is is minimum, then they'll they, they can work on that. Yeah, I mean, we get these all the time. I don't recall the case you're citing, but it, every case has its own unique attributes. Yeah, so I'd like to read it, but um, yeah, I think right for this particular application, we're we're inquiring acquiring what's what's behind the soffit, so we can help arrive at the hardship to go to six if it is a hardship, or if there's some kind of design solution to get it there that seems reasonable, that's not too costly. So we just we don't really know what's holding us back from getting it up higher. I and understand. it's very wide as well. Yeah. So it's it's in the it's in the board hand the board's hand. How did that well, deal well, with I think it? As a courtesy, I'm asking you: Are you okay with an adjournment? Otherwise, we'll go deliberate. And might come back with a denial, or some conditions you might not like. So well, I I say the, um, I say deliberate is fine, and if they they have to meet a certain they have to meet a certain height, then that's so be it. Okay. Okay, you good with that, gentlemen? Erica? Uh, I'm good with that. Uh, if that's what the guy That's what you want, yeah. We can do that. Okay. All right, hang in there. We'll be right back as quick Thank as possible. You. Okay, can you hear us, Chris? Yes. We don't, we don't need to hear you. We're just going to read the decision. So if you don't mind, I guess. Well, he's on the phone. Anyway. Yeah, there's no echo. So I guess you're fine. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the next, the next hearing is, uh,
Oh, Mr. Gleason is here, right? He's in person. Yeah. Yeah. So that's no problem. Okay. Okay. With respect to the petition of 2023-0070, Calvin Gano, the petitioner is seeking relief from 19 NYCRR Part 1220. The 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section AJ601.3, Exception 1. The board makes the following findings. Number one, the subject dwelling is a two story attached single family dwelling with a walkout basement. Number two, the basement layout shows closet spaces, a utility room, a laundry room, a toilet room, and a room labeled as finished storage. It appears from pictures that the basement is also being used as habitable space, as confirmed by the petitioner. Number three, there is no indication of a sleeping room in the basement. Number four, the finished ceiling height throughout the basement is approximately 6 feet 10 inches. This satisfies the allowances of AJ 601.3 of the 2020 Residential Code of New York State. Number five, there is an overhead soffit enclosure with a structural beam and according to the petitioner, a, a steam pipe which projects below the finished ceiling plane of the basement. The minimum headroom at this projection is approximately 5 feet 9 inches. The width of the enclosure suggests that utility conduits may also be present within the enclosure. Number six, a five foot nine inch projection is below the average height of an adult male according to anthropometric data published in the NFPA Life Safety Code. Number seven, the petitioner has not established whether the height of the soffit projection can be increased. Number eight, painting the projection in a color that contrasts to that of the ceiling will call attention to the obstruction and alert persons to avoid the low headroom condition. Number nine, the primary egress path in this layout would be from the basement up an interior set of stairs through the dwelling unit on the first floor and out an exit door. A door directly to grade would be would serve as an emergency escape and rescue opening and provide a more direct route from the basement. 10, installing electrically wired smoke alarms within the basement that are connected to similar devices located on the main level of the building would, if properly maintained, provide warning to persons using the basement in advance of a smoke-related emergency. Number 11, the carbon monoxide detector is required at this level due to the presence of a boiler, a gas-fired boiler in the basement. With respect to 19 NYCRR Part 1220, 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section AJ601.3, Exception 1, the board finds strict compliance with the provisions to the Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code would entail practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship and would be physically or legally impractical. And the granting of this variance will not substantially adversely affect the uniform code provisions for health, safety, and security. With, <clears throat> excuse me, wherefore it is determined that the application for variance from the provisions of 19 NYCRR Part 1220, the 2020 Residential Code of New York State Section AJ601.3, Exception 1, B and is hereby proposed to be granted with the following conditions. Number one, that the electrically wired smoke alarms shall be installed and maintained throughout the basement in accordance with section R314 of the 2020 Residential Code of New York State and connected to similar devices located throughout the main level of the building. Number two, that the paths of egress from the basement via an interior set of stairs to the first floor and via an exterior door with exterior steps directly to grade as outlined in these findings shall be preserved and maintained. Number three, that the basement shall not be used for sleeping. This shall be stated on the certificate of occupancy that is issued by the authority having jurisdiction in this matter. Number four, that the boiler equipment shall be enclosed with a minimum one hour fire resistant rated walls and suitably rated opening protectives to include interior wall dampers if needed for make a bear. Number five, that the elevation to the bottom of the soffit in question shall be raised to a minimum height of six feet above the finished floor. Number six, that all projections in the basement below six feet four inches above the finished floor shall be marked or treated with contrasting color to highlight the low headroom condition. Number seven, that the basement shall conform to all other applicable requirements of the Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code, including but not limited to the requirements for carbon monoxide detection. Any motion to approve with these conditions? So moved. May I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is approved. Furthermore, it should be noted that the decision of this board is limited to the specific building and application before it as contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval or many general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. So you got an approval with conditions, Chris. That is fine. Okay. Thank you very much. 
make a note on the record that um, one of the board members had. Okay, yes, yeah, just uh, on the record that member Shab, who was on remotely, had a leave before the decision. So it was just us three remaining members that voted and approved with conditions. Okay, hearing is closed. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Good day. Every time. Boy, isn't this person uh, present? Um, yes, but that's why I want to put put them on. Oh, it's rock and roll. Okay. The third hearing is in the matter of petition number 2023-0134. The petitioner is Mr. John G. Gleason, RA, for Diego Ventamila. The petition pertains to a variance for an existing detached, I don't know if it's one family or two family construction type 5B, one story in height, approximately 3,100 square feet in gross floor area, located at 8 Caroline Street, Medford, Town of Brookhaven, County of Suffolk, State of New York. The petitioner is seeking relief from 19 NYCRR Part 1220, the 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section AJ601.3, Exception 1, which states space created in basements may have a ceiling that projects to within 6 feet 8 inches of the finished floor and beams, girders, and ducts in such space or other obstructions may project to within 6 feet 4 inches of the finished floor. Existing finished ceiling heights in spaces and basements shall not be reduced. The petitioner is seeking a variance to allow ceiling heights in a basement that are less than allowed. Okay, John, just uh, your name and your yeah, name. Is, uh, my name is John uh, G. Gleason, architect. I uh, practice out of uh, 336 6th Avenue, St. James, New York, 11780. Registered architect in the state of New York. We're here today with uh, the homeowner, Google Ventimiglia, and we're talking about uh, 8 Caroline Street in Medford, New York. Uh, the basement in uh, question, what we're right here for a variance for, is an existing condition. The uh, ceiling height, uh, as built, constructed uh, for the height for the house, is uh, is currently at uh, six foot eight. Um, this is this is this is also uh, allowed. Uh, because the the, the jib board ceiling that's in, installed is right tight to the uh, floor joint. It's the girder. It's kind of an issue why we're seeking the variance. Um, five foot panes uh, under the under uh, the dimension under the, the existing girder. Uh, that the, the basement has finished walls, a couple interior finished walls, an exterior face mansion that allows for egress and an interior stair that goes into the existing house. Uh, there is a um, mechanical room, fire rated, and a uh, existing bathroom, two piece bathroom that is sold within the basement space. The family bought the house like this. Uh, they didn't do any improvements. Um, they're looking to obviously legalize space. And that's that's where that's where we're at. We're, we're trying to get a kind of um, a hearing to determine whether we can modify and make the, the, the finished basement work for the family and get, obtain the proper uh, COs from the building department. The building department's been down there, I think, uh, Dennis Phelps um, with the town of Brookhaven. Uh, he's done some inspections on the house. How did uh, this come about, John? Like, is there a violation? What, well, what happened was they filed for an accessory apartment use, which they obtained. Um, for the first floor, for the first floor. Okay. Okay. So they do, they did like a garage conversion, and um, they saw a, a file for accessory apartment. So then when um, they went to the basement, they found the surprise. It was a finished basement. Okay. And that triggered a um, you know inspection report from uh, Mr. Phelps that said, uh, "Yeah, we're going to have to solve this uh, head height problem issue in in the cellar." 
but it's not really the focus. And that's what brings us here okay um in your section through the through the house it looks like the duct is more of the one creating the head height problem than the beam but was this opened and identified did you open to see what the actual yeah the beam the beam was open uh the beam is covered by uh just sheet rock so is yeah, it tight it, to the bottom it's tight to the bottom there's right. no firm out the duct is uh it's a pretty thick duct, height-wise. Um, the duct can be probably shrunk a little bit, but maybe maybe an inch or two. But it just becomes then comes the issue of the, the friction loss and the duct working properly. This is the main duct supply duct for the house uh, that comes out of the beam. Is is the duct lower than the beam? It looks it's, like it's, it's the same size. It's the same height. It looks like yeah. in a section, but it's it's not blown up, so we're making some assumptions here. But yeah, it's the it's a, it's the five ten. Yeah. All right. So you're saying it is it three or four like built up two by tens yes. in this? Okay. Yes. And the floor joint, the what? Two by eight. The floor joints are two by eights. Yes. And um, the house was constructed this way. That's where the slab was. That's where the floor joints. Like I like I mentioned previously, the the ceiling, the half inch sheet. She rock is right up tight to the floor joists. Yeah. There's no, no no drop ceilings or anything. So uh, John, it's not just if we flatten the duct, we get a few more inches. It's actually the beam also. It would be a structural yes. uh, modification as well. Right. And okay. the beam, uh, I would assume like the beam can be upset in a couple areas. You know, if that's a the compromise. I mean, that's typically what we what but, we ask. If but, but I think that. Um, it's still going to be. It's still going to need a, a code variance because it's still not going to be. You know, yeah. the original ceilings out of. I think out of code, right? No, it's just, eight, it's just there. Six yeah, eight is fine. Six eight yes, is, it's just it is, so complies with code. Right. It's just the, 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 so just so the board understands the plans. Mm -hmm. so on the first floor, you come down the stair. Right. Mm -hmm. from, yes. You have a closet designation, but there's a door yes, there. Door right? there. Yep. So you go down, and then you got a double back. Through finished storage. Correct. Through okay, so maybe that opening there could be some modifications made. Yes. To get to the, you know, typically the six foot threshold, we start to have problems. But again, I'm only speaking for myself. Uh, I don't know about the other gentleman here, but, um, and then you're out into this finished basement, which is nicely well appointed. Yes, and then and then we come into the issue of my other. Diagram that is like I sent to the state. Uh, you know, this this orange line is drop duct work that is at the end of the floor. So that's 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 where we have to kind of this is where the issue is dealing with, like you said, the girder can be can be solved. So well, that soffit's how wide? Soffit's approximately uh, 24 inches wide for okay. the duct work. And that's the same head height as the openings into the finished storage or the finished storage heights lower head heights. The finished head heights are uh, the same size. Yes. It's okay. The same, just, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same height, height. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because you just duct and the girders right behind it. You know, you can see like in this picture, in this picture, the girder is right, right behind the duct. And you can see this T forms a T in the duct. And it just comes out of the mechanical room here. This is the opening we were just talking about. I mean, I would be uh, right here. This, this is going to be the, the staircase. Opening. You have to go uh, through the finished right. storage room and exactly the stair. And boom, you're into this back room area, right? This, so this goes, leads up into the interior staircase. Now, if this thing wasn't so finished nicely, well done, that I kind of want to move that wall out to the other side of the soffit. And it takes away that head uh, height, you know what I mean? I see. And then wherever there's a door, you just, it's low because you're opening a door. You know, you're going through something that's lower. Oh, I and, see. But yeah. it's just so nicely well appointed that I don't know how much that would cost to do that. I guess my biggest concern is right here. The 90 degree? Where you have to yes. go under the duct and the, and the beam mm -hmm. to get to the stairs. Yes. I mean, this yes, this yes. I could live with, but this this I'm uh, having a tough time with. So there's three finished storage spaces. Yes. 
Yes. You don't want to use them for anything but storage? I use for the my, my machine for exercise. My my son will play. Okay. And my dog. So it's more recreation than storage. Yeah. I mean it looks yeah, it's nicely finished. finished. Uh the big one is Every every people will go the the beautiful right now, not that you you may nothing small no, nothing. But it's only for the story. Uh, my son will, will play from my dog. That's the um. It's, the, it's really the ducks. Really, I mean, if we can maybe re. Organize the duct work and gets maybe a couple inches out of it, but still, it's going to be kind of. Uh, said it's bang, some bits, the mechanical room goes in the middle of the space, like you said, and we'll move the wall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there is a, a, obviously the exterior entrance to that uh, area. So to minimize the expense of doing modifications, I mean, I'd be inclined to possibly throw out there if it was used as storage, but I'm hearing now it's not storage to maybe just close off the finished storage with a door. And then the main circulation to go to the stair, we alter that opening oh, to get gotcha. it to six, you know, right. and that's where you're localizing the work. Maybe you're just pushing up a header in that area. Sure. But I don't know what that does for the duct work. Do we know if the duct work is for upstairs? Or is it I, a diffuser in the socket? There's a diffuser in the socket, yes. So, um, um, I can, you know, we can alter the duct work and uh, especially this trunk here that goes across if that's your concern. Yeah. You know, we could probably see if we were able to push a little bit or, you know, uh, make a dual duct in between the two, in the two floor joists to get some kind of uh, uh, head height, you know, to, to transition uh, across transverse this space in here. It looks um, empty right now. And maybe, yeah, just, and maybe move it, move it to the other side of, of the door to the boiler room, so that it's. It's not in the way of the stair. Well, I'm it, yeah, the en exit entrance to the stairs is right here. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, it sort of is. I'm, I would be inclined to. Yeah, okay, if you're going to upset it into. Do that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I think the Close it off. Let's put a door here and close it off. And you got it. Oh, it goes away. I mean, it, it looks empty now. I'm sorry. I'm just what? at that soffit. Put a wall up of the door. So oh, the two to go to the bathroom. Eliminate, eliminates the head height problem there, except at the door. Except at the door. Which we've but done in the past where we just made a door. concerned about the door right here. It's not going to encroach on that open. And they would be amenable to altering no. that to get it higher. Yeah. But if you took this duct and, say, maybe came around here and, and upset it into the. Uh, that's. Into I the main, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. If you did something. In that area, I'm not concerned about getting to the bathroom so much as, as this is well, a if you primary move means it of egress. More into the circulation, then it's going to be more of a problem. That's what I was saying. If you took that space out of the circulation, it was more of a. Although, if you made it into two ducts and made them thinner, that maybe. Raise this and put another duct here that's again higher. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, basically, I'd want to see like six foot right in this area right mm -hmm. here. That's two, that's a two inch uh, increase, right? I mean, that's probably doable. Just to circulate under this part. And then no issue with this along the uh, less concern here. Okay. Although we do have a means of egress here too. Maybe it's not as much of a concern. 
The floor is uh, right on the slab. Yes, with the tile, the vinyl flooring right on the right stuck on the yes on the slab. Lice of flush with the ceiling. Yes. Uh, uh, see, they just wait to get flush. Okay, what's the fuel source of the mechanical? I believe they have the oil. The oil. oil. Yes. Yeah. Oil. Tank here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they have an oil tank. And you have a door that says uh, fireproof self closing? Yes. Do we yes. assume that that other room has a fire rate of enclosure on it? Or? Yes. Yeah, please. Yeah. Correct. Five it does existing? Ceiling. Okay. Yes, yeah, existing. Yes. Okay. The ceiling, ceiling, ceiling or the wall? Ceiling walls. Ceiling walls. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yep. Fire taped. Um, done years ago, obviously, but I think there's no sleeping, fire. no kitchen needed. No, there's no, there's no plumbing besides the bathroom. There's no, no pipes sticking out anywhere in the walls or anything. Drain drains or floor drains. Like no the the It'd be nice to know, John, what the bottom of the beam is. The ducts can kind of be flattened, and then you can just redo your soffit. Yeah, the but if the beam the, is tight, then the you gotta offset the beam, which is expensive. You know? Correct. Yes, and it's five foot ten. That's where it is. Plus, that's the sheetrock. So. Five foot ten and a half inch. It's, it's, of it's wood or is it steel? It's wood. Yeah, it's wood. Yeah, it's triple, triple uh, pieces of wood. Yeah. I mean, you could. It's conventional lumber. I mean, maybe you could do engineered lumber and do some LVLs and get if you can get a cup an inch and a half or so, or maybe paint it. Right. And that take the drywall off every little half inch. Yes, you know, a half inch adds up. Yeah. And then maybe we ask you to put padding on anything below six. I don't know. We got to talk you it could out. Maybe put another column here so you could reduce I, I the height of this beam. He's an architect. I think he understands that. Yeah. yeah that I could throw like you know maybe we could get the uh, shallow micro land with with a thin piece of steel. You know. Um, yeah. Get it. I mean, under after obviously under seven and a half inch micro land has to be shallower yeah. than that. Yeah. Engineer it that way. Yeah. And also, and also, if you add another column right on the other side of the door there, the columns in between the footings. two columns, then. Right. Well, right. yeah. It's going to be. But you're whole... talking a small. But isn't well, that's isn't true. there one there? Yes. There and there's one there. Yeah, they're so pretty close. Between those two. Yeah, we just have to, we just have to add, um, you know, shin on the top of the existing plate of the column. Right? Right. You could use it. It's not. You do the sections, right? I yeah, mean, I don't want to design. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, you could yeah. conceivably sandwich steel plates and yes. then cut out the material. Well, we, and can, then get... we can get it to six foot, right? And that's well. That's, what that's nice think. to hear from you. Yeah, I think if uh, that would that would that really means, sit well yeah. with definitely the circulation area, and then with regards to the hazard of stuff coming in, it's circulation area, right? That's what we were talking about. Yeah, not so much where the walls are. We can't, we can't walk through. I mean, you're talking about this area, this area here, and here, and this doorway right here. Right here, here, and here. Those are the these, openings to the, to the, the gym? The right, the gym area was right here. And then here is the uh, opening, the door opening to the interior staircase. Which goes right. to so I think I understand you correctly. You're talking about getting those three openings to six feet? Is that what you're saying? And with the bottom, try to, what about like the you said, every half inch matters with the you know, sheet rock, transform the duct into wider, shallower. Personally, I think that would be easier because that's only duct work, it's not structure, right? right. That that's, 90 degrees. Absolutely. So right. you should be able to flatten as a proportion, right? So if you widen it, yes. we, we drywall it or expose it. Or expose it, right? Just yeah. to put out the eliminate the. Uh, you know, she got something in the realm of approvability there, Mr. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Sir, no. what did anyone make? Say again? No, 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 Right there. Can't see that. Uh, so it's on the, it's on the right side of the house. Right yeah. This is north. 
Correct. Yep. Yes. I got all my questions answered, so. Okay. We usually do um, carbon monoxide. Right. And you have a note here in the drawings. <clears throat> Sometimes we do heat the rise. You're a fireman, right? Heat the rise. Uh, do, do a heat detector, right? And the, yeah. the uh, mechanical rooms. Yeah. So those are typical conditions for approval that we do. Okay. Um, it's not catastrophic, I think. Um, not yet. Okay. So um, we're going to kick it around, come back with a decision. You can give us minutes. Yes, yeah, 15 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes. Well, I'm going to type we fast. We never do this in 10 minutes. I know. <laughs> I'm managing his expectations. <laughs> okay, back on the record with respect to the petition of number 2023-0134, the grief party, Mr. Diego Ventamila. The petitioner is seeking relief from 19 NYCRR Part 1220. The 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section AJ 601.3, Exception 1. The board makes the following findings. Number one, the dwelling that is the subject of this determination has two dwelling units on the first floor. Number two, the basement layout shows a utility room, a toilet room, a series of finished rooms used as habitable recreation space as per the owner. Number three, there is no indication of a sleeping room in the basement. Number four, the finished ceiling height throughout the basement is approximately 6 feet 8 inches. This satisfies the allowances of AJ 601.3 of the 2020 Residential Code of New York State. Number five, overhead soffit enclosures with ventilation ducts and a central girder project below the finished ceiling plane of the basement. Minimum headroom at these projections is approximately 5 feet 10 inches. Number six, a 5 foot 10 inch projection is equal to the average height of an adult male according to anthropometric data published in the NFPA Life Safety Code. Number seven, painting the projection in a color that contrasts to that of the ceiling will call attention to the obstruction and alert persons to avoid the low headroom condition. Number eight, the primary means of egress in this layout would be from the basement up an interior set of stairs through one of the dwelling units on the first floor and out and exit door. A door with exterior steps directly to grade serves an emergency escape and rescue opening and provides a more direct route from the basement. Number nine, installing electrically wired smoke alarms within the basement that are connected to similar devices located on the main level of the building would, if properly maintained, provide warning to persons using the basement in advance of a smoke related emergency. So with respect to 19 NYCRR part 1220, 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section AJ 601.3, Exception 1. The board finds strict compliance with the provisions to the Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code would entail practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship and would, would create an excessive and unreasonable economic burden and would be physically or legally impractical. And the granting of this variance will not substantially adversely affect the Uniform Code's provisions for health, safety, and security. Wherefore, it is determined that the application for variance from the provisions of 19 NYCRR Part 1220, the 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section AJ 601.3, Exception 1B, and is hereby proposed to be granted with the following conditions. Condition number one, that electrically wired smoke alarm shall be installed and maintained throughout the basement in accordance with Section R314 of the 2020 Residential Code of New York State and connected to similar devices located throughout the main level of the building. Number two, that the paths of egress from the basement via an interior set of stairs to the first floor and via an exterior door with exterior steps directly to grade, as outlined in these findings, shall be preserved and maintained. Number three, that the basement shall not be used for sleeping. This shall be stated on the certificate of occupancy that is issued by the authority having jurisdiction in this matter. Number four, that the boiler equipment shall be enclosed within the minimum one hour fire resistant rated walls and suitably rated opening protectives to include interior wall dampers if needed for makeup air. Number five, that the soffit encompassing the beam and ductwork between the square columns to the area just south of the stairs to the first floor shall have a minimum headroom 
of six feet above finished floor and access directly to the main stairs shall be created from this room. Number six, that the east-west soffit containing the duct from the boiler room shall be raised to a minimum of six feet in height above finished floor. Number seven, that all projections below six feet four inches above finished floor shall be marked or treated with contrasting color to highlight the low headroom condition. And number eight, that the basement shall conform to all other applicable requirements of the uniform prior fire prevention and building code, including but not limited to the requirements for carbon monoxide detection. I need a motion to approve with these conditions? So moved. May I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is approved. Furthermore, it should be noted that the decision of this board is limited to the specific building and application before it as contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specification presented in support of this application. How do we do, John? Uh, okay. I think it's a great solution. I appreciate the great. board. So I thank you. What they said really good. Thank and, you. Uh, it's going to work out fine and be okay. safe for the applicants. Great. It's the goal, right? Um, thank you for your time. Great. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you right. very much. Thank you. Okay. Good Bye -bye. job today. Uh, your son has learned a lot from this. He's going to wants to become an architect or an engineer. <laughs> Get a building permit. He knows better. He knows better. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We have the last hearing. What do we have here? We have petition 0562. Oh, this is the holdover from April, I believe. Yeah. Is Amy here today? Amy DeVito? Who's in that lower picture? Nobody. Is that us? That lower picture is a picture of this room. Yeah. From the. Okay. Good That's afternoon. Good. How are you? I'm good. How about everybody? We're hanging in there. Almost, almost Friday. So I'll just keep telling ourselves that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, should I just begin? No, no. We're going to read this back into the record, oh. quick, <laughs> and then um, we'll give you the floor. Okay. <clears throat> okay. The fourth and final hearing today is in the matter of petition number 2022-0562. The petitioner is Miss Amy DeVito for Jill Bergson and Timothy Pell. Okay, this petition pertains to the alteration of existing detached dwelling. Is it detached? Uh, uh, yes. Detached dwelling, the subject building is two stories in height, a frame construction, approximately 4,030 square feet in gross floor area, and is located at 35 Gall Road South, East of Talk at Town of Brookhaven County of Suffolk State in New York. Petitioners seeking relief from 19 NYCRR Part 1220, the 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section AJ 601.3, Exception 1, which allows space created in basements may have a ceiling that projects to within six feet eight inches of the finished floor, and beams, girders, and ducts in such space or other obstructions may project to within six feet four inches of the finished floor. Existing finished ceiling heights and space in basements shall not be reduced. Petitioner requests that overhead obstructions in the basement be less than allowed. Okay. All right, Amy. I think we sent you away last time to get more information, right? Yeah. So um, we, and that was quite a few months ago now because we were going back and forth between the contractor, the HVAC mechanic, the architect, the owner. Uh, in the end, they were able to uh, determine that the ceiling height could be, or not the ceiling height, the um, the girder height, the, where the, I'm sorry, <laughs> the soffit height, where the HVAC um, <clears throat> duct is, could be, we could gain about two inches, almost three. So we were originally requesting five feet, nine inches. We are now requesting five feet, 11 and a half inches. So we are just shy of meeting that six foot um, threshold where I know it's generally a more straightforward request. Um, so 
they will be removing the insulation that wraps the ducts and then uh, from finished floor to ceiling height, once the uh, ceiling is finished, it will be the five foot 11 and a half inches. Um, there was also discussion at the last hearing about um, opening up the other side of the stairs, meaning so that you could pass through that actually, I, I'm sorry, closing up the other side of the stairs so no pass through could occur. They they would prefer not to do that just because it creates just more of a flow in the area for them to you know get in and out of the basement. Um, but I'm hoping that with our ability to raise uh, the two and a half inches, the board will be satisfied, but I'm happy to answer any questions the board may have. Okay, I'm looking for the plan. I can't find the plan. In my submission. There, there was uh, a new. It was in the old packet. packet. No, it was in the new packet. It's uh, eight and a half by eleven. Hold it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Hard to read. It's not read. Barely legible. Yeah, I remember this. We had um, Mr. Ellis from Albany at the hearing last time, and he had raised the question of and made some good suggestions. Um, so the opening, I guess, just to the west of the stair. Yes, you want to keep that open. We would prefer. I mean, they just basically said that, you know, they they would prefer to, you know, be able to access the stairs. They actually think it's safer to be able to pass through there to access the stairs from either way than to, you know, close that up. Um, you know, they would, of course, be willing to paint the duct or put some type of glaring marker on the, you know, the duct. So that way people are aware that it's there when you pass through. Right, on so either. You're going to get the duct up to 511 and a half? Correct. With, and then what does that the, still what, make it lower than the beam? Say again. Does the duct is it duct still lower than the beam projection at the openings? Well, right, the, that says six feet on the drawing. What is the height of the beam? The beam is six feet, and we are going to be five eleven and a half. Slightly lower, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, that was the question. I, I think that just says six feet. Yeah, that was the best they could do. I mean, we were trying everything possible. <laughs> So we are at our we are at our max for uh, for floor to ceiling height, finished floor to ceiling height. As and far the duct as... won't have the insulation on it now. No, they're going to remove the insulation, and they okay. well, there they might be like a very thin layer of insulation between the duct and the actual sheetrock, but <clears throat> okay, yeah, they'll be they'll be uh, removing the the puffy silver insulation that you see on it. Okay. Were there any other comments on that? I didn't get to read all the minutes, but they're just going to do the um, central. No, um, nothing on the sides, right? There are also ducts on the side. I think we were less concerned yeah. with the duct on the side the because yeah. it was up against the wall. My, my question was whether that was the only one that they were going to touch. Yes, that is correct. The. So, uh, the, the duct that runs through more or less down the center of the basement, that is the one that we are raising. The duct that abuts up against the exterior wall, uh, that will remain as it is. Um, and it is a smaller area and it's obviously against the wall, so it doesn't create any issues with pass through. My memory is not that great, but we talked about potentially closing in the boiler room. I think we talked about what kind of construction that was. Is that correct? I don't remember. We do so many of these. Typical condition. Yeah, so that's not an issue with your clients, you know. What the fire to have it fire? Fire, fire yeah, one hour fire rated separation around the mechanical room. Not at all. Um, as a matter of fact, of course you guys will suggest it, but the building department is not going to at Brookhaven will not allow us to pass inspection without meeting those basic code requirements. So all of that's that that's not in the code. That's not a code requirement. That's not a code requirement. That's our requirement. That's our enhanced upgrades <laughs> for a variance. They enforce it anyway. Um even without uh the um suggestion from you guys, we always have to deal with that uh, you know, fire rated sheetrock by the boiler, fire rated door. Um 
that's that's kind of standard issue with them. Okay. Do you ever want to object to that? Then? Yeah, you yeah. know you're that much smarter now. You know it's not in the code, so <laughs> you can't do it. Is, it now is it's... required to have fire rated sheetrock above the boiler, mm -hmm. but not on the walls. Yeah, well they would be the fine. Door. So if they're doing that, uh just keep in mind it isn't it is not a code requirement. It's not in there anymore, Mr. Hames. Yeah, what's that? That's not in here. Unless it's a certain BQ what? out, but it's not on oh, yeah. the code anymore. Above the yeah. oh. good practice, but I think it, it depends on the well, distance. What, what, the code, the what the code has required now in all spaces in unfinished basements is that they have especially where there is less than a, a 10 by 2 joist out of some separation between the base and the floor above. No, no. That's for the uh, that's for the engineer lumber. Gen Gen right? right. The half inch drywall thing? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. But not about oh, boiler equipment because they're so efficient now. They don't really have. Oh, with new boiler yeah, yeah. equipment. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. All right. Um, well, this is good. We're not quite there, but it's a fast improvement. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but actually, I do see notated on the plans already. Wall, ceiling, and door of mechanical room shall all be one hour fire rated. Equipment shall meet manufacturer's bleh, manufacturer's clearance. Provide fresh air intake. So that is notated on there. Yeah, I have a very light printout, so I didn't see that, but thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, you guys have any other questions? No, no, no. Okay, then. Hang tight. We'll be right back. All righty. Let me get you a decision. Okay, I'll be. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Can you hear me okay, Amy? Yes, I can. I just want to make sure. Okay, we're back on the record with respect to the petition number 2022-0562, Timothy Powell and Jill Berkson, petitioners seeking relief from 19 NYCRR Part 1220, the 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section AJ601.3, Exception 1. Board makes the following findings. Number one, drawings of the subject dwelling show a basement with finished and unfinished spaces. Number two, these drawings show a large habitable room that wraps around a central stairway. The basement also has a non-habitable unfinished space used as a mechanical room. Number three, the drawings indicate that the basement has a finished ceiling height of approximately six feet, nine inches throughout. This height conforms to the allowance of exception one of section AJ601.3 of the 2020 Residential Code of New York State. Number four, there are two locations in the basement where overhead projections violate the code's minimum headroom requirements. These obstructions occur along a central girder and along an exterior wall of the basement. Five, the obstruction at the exterior wall is due to a ventilation duct run that is enclosed with gypsum board and has a soffit at approximately five feet nine inches above finished floor. There is little likelihood that persons will pass underneath the soffit, which somewhat mitigates the hazard at this location. Number six, painting this enclosure in a color that contrasts to the ceiling would and further mitigate the obstruction by drawing attention to the reduction and alerting persons to avoid coming into contact with it. Number seven, the centrally located overhead obstruction is due to a structural girder and two adjacent runs of insulation ventilation, ventilation ducts, insulated ventilation ducts. The bottom of the ducts was shown to be at approximately five feet, nine inches above finished floor and the bottom of the girder is approximately six feet above finished floor in the drawings dated 10, 11, 22. Eight, at a previous hearing in this matter, the board requested a reconsideration of the design of the centrally located ventilation ducts by the applicant and their design professionals. Number nine, the petitioner has produced and revised sheet A101 dated 6, 15, 23, in which it is proposed to lift the centrally located ducts and provide a minimum, minimum headroom of five feet, 11 and a half inches. Number 10, a five foot, 11 and a half headroom exceeds the height of an average American male according to anthropometric data contained in the NFPA life safety code. Number 11, the building's boiler equipment is located within the basement. 
providing a rated enclosure and opening protectives around the boiler equipment should improve fire safety. 12. Electrical wired smoke alarms installed within the basement and connected to similar devices located on the main level of the building would, if properly maintained, provide warning to persons in the basement in advance of a smoke related emergency. So, with respect to 19 NYCRR Part 1220, the 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section AJ 601.3, Exception 1, the board finds strict compliance with the provisions to the Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code would entail practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship and would be physically or legally impractical. And the granting of this variance will not substantially adversely affect the Uniform Code's provisions for health, safety, and security. Wherefore, it is determined that the application for a variance from the provisions of 19 NYCRR Part 1220 of the 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section AJ 601.3, Exception 1, be and is hereby proposed to be granted with the following conditions. Condition 1, that the minimum finished headroom at the two centrally located ducts shall be 5 feet 11 and a half inches above finished floor. Number 2, that the projections due to the central girder and adjacent ducts and the projection running adjacent to the wall shall be painted in a color that contrasts to their surroundings and make visible to low headroom conditions. Number three, that electrically wired smoke alarm shall be installed throughout the basement and connected to similar devices throughout the dwelling in accordance with section three R314 of the 2020 Residential Code of New York State. <clears throat> Number four, that there shall be no bedroom or kitchen located in the basement and this shall be clearly stated on the certificate of completion from the local building department for this legalization. Number five, that the basement boiler room shall be enclosed. This enclosure shall have a minimum one hour fire resistant rating and a minimum 45 minute opening protective to include interior wall dampers if needed for make a pair. Number six, that a code compliant opening for emergency escape and rescue shall be maintained at the basement. And seven, that the basement shall conform to all other applicable requirements of the Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code, including but not limited to the requirements for carbon monoxide detection. Need a motion to approve with these conditions? So moved. May I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is approved. Furthermore, it should be noted that the decision of this board is limited to the, the specific building and application before it as contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. Okay, I'm officially talked out. <laughs> yeah, that was a long one for you guys, the hearings today. <laughs>